Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you all been doing well. I just wanted to make this update video as on this channel we have had numerous discussions surrounding Intel's 13th and 14th gen stability issues, which appear to be quite widespread. I'm actually just in the midst of traveling right now, so this is going to be a video with more commentary than actual footage or anything, but uh, feel free to listen to it in the background and that's probably also why it sounds a little bit different or why the audio sounds a bit unusual. Since Intel has now finally put out an official statement addressing the problems, I thought I'd give you guys my updates about what I think, and since my last video, there has been more information shared. GN has put out a video on their channel about how they're investigating possible oxidation problems from the manufacturing process, which Intel did also actually address in their statement. I'll leave a link to that video in the description so you can check it out. I'll actually be looking forward to their follow-up content piece to that video after that investigation is done. In their official statement, and this was posted to Reddit as well as their official community forums by a PR manager, they state how they have determined elevated operating voltage is what is causing instability issues in some 13th and 14th gen desktop processors. Their analysis of return processors confirms that the elevated operating voltage is stemming from a microcode algorithm resulting in an incorrect voltage request to the processor. They also went on to mention that a microcode update will be distributed soon. They're targeting a mid-August release, and then from there, depending on how fast motherboard manufacturers release BIOS updates, it could take about another week, maybe a few weeks. Now, initially, they only had this in their post, and a lot of the tech media outlets ran with it, and then afterwards, they addressed the oxidation claims, which is kind of interesting how they did that, but I guess those articles can always be updated afterwards. Nonetheless, in regards to the oxidation claims, they said they can confirm that the VIA oxidation was a manufacturing issue, which affected some early Intel Core 13th Gen CPUs. However, this issue was root caused and addressed with manufacturing improvements and screens in 2023. And they also went on to say that after an analysis, it has been determined that only a small number of instability reports can be connected to the manufacturing issue. And then they further re reiterate that they're going to be releasing a microcode patch, which should address the instability. Now, reading this, I personally feel like we're actually not being told the full story here. The other thing that they don't specifically address is degradation. They just talk about how in some cases, due to excessive voltage demands from the algorithm, it causes instability with user CPUs. But they don't necessarily give an explanation that because the CPUs were utilizing high voltage, that they've been degraded. I'm not sure if that's because they assume that's a given for most consumers, but I'm also thinking that they don't want to do that because they don't want to get hit with a flood of users now trying to RMA their CPUs knowing they've been degraded. According to Tom's, they've been told that the microcode patch will not repair processors already experiencing the problems, but more so, it's just to prevent it from happening to those who aren't affected by it. Honestly, if it were me and I was having a lot of instability issues, blue screens of deaths, and then learn later that it was because of their microcode which caused degradation, then I would just arm the chip at this point. Let Intel deal with it since they're the ones who should have been regulating this from the very start. At the very least, it's good to know that there is some kind of acknowledgement and that there is something being done about it, and hopefully this will help many of you dealing with this problem. One concern I do have is that once this microcode is out, how will it affect performance? If in theory this is supposed to be lowering voltage, which will affect boost behavior, then could that also lead to reduced performance? Now, you might also be wondering how does this explain the CPUs that Wendell was talking about in his original video where there were server motherboards experiencing issues afterwards or quote-unquote degradation. Something that I guess he assumed, and so did I in my last video, was that server motherboards were supposed to be running conservative power settings. But Wendell did post some interesting update clips on Twitter showing how by default, an ASUS motherboard was running unlimited power limits on a T-series chip, which is only supposed to be a 35 watt part. Buildzoin had also shared screenshots of a vid chart from Hardware Info of a chip running on a server board, and the tables looked pretty fucked and not what I'd expect from a server setup. And I'm not sure if server managers are doing this, but because it seems as though these, even though these server boards aren't properly adhering to Intel's power guidelines, and they're also using some pretty high AC and DC load line values resulting in high voltage demands from the vid and then eventually leading to degradation and causing instability. So I'm not sure if they're actually going in and checking that at the beginning when they're building these systems or, you know, they're just finding out later on that, you know what, this is how the systems were actually ran and they weren't adhering to the proper guidelines. Guys, since January of this year, I've been running my 14900K with lowered AC DC values where, where I'm effectively undervolting and because of that, my vid chart looks nothing like the one that Buildsoid shared in his screenshot. Here is a screenshot of Hardware Info 64 with my AC at 0.21 and DC at 0.98 with LLC at level 4. I do not see those high excessive voltage spikes. 
My peak cores barely go over 1.4 volts, if at all, and the system has been smooth sailing since. I've also set the power guidelines to like 253 watts for the PL1 and PL2. Meanwhile, I've seen people posting vids of their chips and they're showing 1.55 to 1.6 volts, if not even more in hardware info. I don't want to come off as if I'm blaming the end user here. I'm not, because I'm in agreement that the end user, aside from maybe enabling XFP, shouldn't have to go into their BIOS and tweak several power settings to ensure their chip runs stable and doesn't face degradation down the road. And because most people aren't doing that, they're unaware and not monitoring their vids. I've seen several people stating that they were using Asus's AIOC or that it was enabled by default, which is shoving north of 1.6 volts into their chips and then eventually leading to instability problems. I can't remember where I saw the video, but I think it was on their official Republic of Gamers channel where they have a stream and they're praising uh, the AIOC and how it works and with one click and everyone should be using it. This kind of behavior and the lack of strict guidelines from Intel when working with motherboard manufacturers is basically the ingredients for what this disaster is. I'd love to spend more time discussing this in more detail, but honestly, I'm actually quite limited with the time I have right now as I'm on the go. But if you're someone who's been having a lot of issues with their chip, arm it. And if you aren't having issues, go into your BIOS and check all the power limits. Check what your AC and DC values are. Along with that, the vids and hardware info. Hopefully you can prevent yourself from degrading your chip and experiencing these issues. As for now, that's going to wrap it up for this one, you guys. I'll see you all in the next one.